is so remarkable. Sam is just having a great time out there, and uh, really, that that really will have a big impact on a lot of people outside of the racing uh, situation. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. A slick race car, though. Really right? nice. Wow, so nice. All right, so you know what's going on around here. Oh. Uh, we have a lot of action. We have wildfires. Uh, they've doubled since last weekend in the number of large wildfires here in Oregon. Nine, that's the latest update this morning. Eight up in Washington. Here's the fire perimeters. You can see them kind of scattered about, especially central Oregon and then northeast and southeast areas of Washington and Oregon. And right here, that's the fire perimeter of the bootleg fire, which we've been watching and monitoring the growth of that fire for over a week now. All right, so the size, 281,000 plus acres, the containment at 22%, so there's at least that. The Grandview fire at the containment uh, percentage about 31 and 6,000 acres, and again, that was the most recent update. Wind gust forecast down towards Sprague River, so that's fairly close to the bootleg fire as we head into the overnight hours. It settles down. It's going to be fairly calm too, but then we kind of pick it right back up. By the time we get to the afternoon evening hours, that's when it's at its strongest usually as far as intensity goes out of the west about 15, 20, maybe even 25 miles per hour. So that is uh, near the surface. And so you could imagine any sort of smoke in that region is probably going to carry from the west to the east. Well, higher up in the atmosphere, we have a southwest flow, and that's also going to carry that smoke in that direction. So the threat of it really getting west of the Cascades is, is very limited, the Cascades, I should say. And it's going to mainly stay for eastern Oregon and Washington. Now, there's a ridge of high pressure off towards the east, and that smoke is pretty much riding the top of it and then sweeping back down as it's carried with the wind. Current air quality around Oregon, it's, it's not too bad, especially, again, west of the Cascades, but it does decrease, and it's not nearly as healthy, you could say, uh, for areas closer to those wildfire sources. And uh, Idaho seeing uh, at least a, a broad sweep of moderate to maybe unhealthy and sensitive groups with the air quality. So we do have a warning there till Sunday afternoon. See the fire danger down to the south, and then we have this little pocket here where we have a red flag warning till Sunday at 8 p.m. No rain, it's not coming, uh, high pressures in place, and it's going to keep us nice and dry. In fact, we're not even seeing much cloud coverage. We had beautiful weather today, sunshine going on all the way out to the Oregon coast. Uh, some rain down to the south, we have monsoon season kicking in, so they've seen some pockets of very heavy rain. We saw some videos earlier in Arizona where there was some flash flooding. Uh, so far in July, we just have that big old T, a trace of rain. That's it. Uh, we are behind and uh, I do not expect to see any rain as we go through the forecast this week. Uh, another week. All right, Sunday tomorrow, yep, from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. till sunset, sunrise, everything in between. Temperatures tomorrow right around the lower 80s. A wonderful seven-day forecast. I have 85 for a high tomorrow. Monday at 86, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in the lower 80s. A little bit warmer on Friday, but still uh, not bad. No Excessive heat in the forecast and no rain, just beautiful summer weather. All right, we'll be back after the break. Stay right here.